China has been shifting from a country that copies ideas from the West to a tech and innovation powerhouse in recent years. And the Chinese government has issued a national science and technology innovation plan to promote the process. The rise of artificial intelligence is just one example. Vast sums of money have been put into AI startups in China and many existing tech companies have opened new research labs. What will be the future of AI in China? How should we view China's competitive edge in innovation? And what should be done to ensure continued progress? To discuss these issues and more, I'm very happy to be joined by Dr. Zhang Yaqin, President of Baidu. This is a dialogue. I'm Yang Rei. Welcome to Dialogue. Nice to be back. <laughs> yes, annually, we, we are very happy to be here uh, on Dialogue. It's a very popular topic for everyone almost in urban areas to address the issue of artificial intelligence and the Chinese government has made it an imperative to prioritize the development of artificial intelligence. So now, what are the reasons behind China's AI fever? Mm. Well, you know, artificial intelligence is uh, the most significant transformative force of our time. You know, there might be some you know, hypes and, uh, and bubbles in the short term. But overall, it is uh, transformative, it is real, and it is uh, tectonic. Uh, and that's why uh, lots of companies are beginning to invest. In fact, a lot of companies put all their stake <laughs> you know, in AI, like Baidu. Uh, Chinese companies doing the right thing, you know, make this a national priority. And it is, uh, uh, in fact, one of uh, the uh, major initiatives of uh, the national plan. You know, there's uh, a well laid out national strategy on this. So I think China is well posed to become a, a one of uh, the leaders in the world. Do you think Baidu is burning money and you won't have a serious return in the investment? Because uh, you see every day many, many startup companies uh, uh, with the excuse of uh, you know, artificial intelligence. So many are coming back from Silicon Valley and so many uh, PE and uh, Andrew, like uh, Zen founder of the Bob Xu, uh, they are all doing these things. Do you right. think uh, this is a matter of bubbles? Yes, there, there are some bubbles. You know, uh, any uh, transformative uh, technology and industry, you know, will have some you know hypes and bubble in the short term. Just like you know, back internet, the 1999, the 2000, you know, there was a bubble, and the bubble actually burst it. But internet was real. It really transformed the entire society, economy, and also you know, our, our, our lifestyle. But the same thing with AI. Um, AI, in, in fact, there are companies who claim they're AI company, they're, they're not. And the VCs invest maybe in the wrong companies. So, so, you know, in the short term, you will see companies disappear. You will see uh, money gets no return. That is normal, it's fine. You know, that, that market uh, decides. Um, but let me, let me just say this, you know, AI is not uh, mysterious, you know, it is already here. You know, for Baidu, we use AI to elevate our search experience. Search has been around for a long time. You know, it, it is actually one of uh, the key applications of uh, AI you know, with uh, you know, voice recognition and you know, picture recognition. You're able to search uh, the contents with uh, you know, real uh, voice and the real the pictures and the face, and also natural language. Uh, also, of course, AI expand the whole horizon space of, uh, of mobile. You know, right now, it's the uh, you know, Internet of Things. And besides, you know, AI is enable you to uh, understand people and get the information you, you need. So it is actually transforming, leveraging our existing uh, core business in search. But obviously, it's also going to help us get into new segments. For example, the conversational AI uh, interface for, for home. Uh, smart living, uh, for autonomous driving, you know, for uh, transportation, and also for business, vertical business, such as finance, uh, healthcare, education, logistics, you know, with uh, the Baidu cloud. So it is actually everywhere. You know, it takes some time for new industry to take off, but you know, it's not uh, something that was in the past. It is already in our products. It's uh, uh, being uh, rolled out very quickly. Are you suggesting that the rise of the AI threatens to utterly disrupt and derail our traditional way of thinking and lifestyles? Well, you will disrupt you know, or, or change some of our uh, business model, for example. 
or change the, you know, the way we design our products and provide our service. But overall, it is uh, continuous in the sense that, in fact, uh, mobile internet and automation already laid out the foundation you know, for AI to go you know, to deeper into you know, more applications. Uh, so it is uh, disrupted if you are not ready to embrace. But if you're already in the internet, if you're already in the mobility, uh, and I think it's natural, and in the big data, for example, you're natural to uh, embrace AI. So I think it, it's not as uh, uh, scary, as uh, threatening as most people you know, think. And obviously, there are people talking about a uh, different type of AI, talking about you know, artificial general intelligence, which is uh, different. What I'm talking about is really the uh, uh, well-focused, uh, task-oriented, uh, deep learning, machine learning uh, technology uh, that's based on a large number of uh, data and, and the high computing power, which is already you know, being used today. Yes, the uh, advent of AI will be a driving force uh, for the sustainable, de sustainable development of China. But uh, look, inevitably we're going to have a serious concerns about what the future might hold for the economy and for our social life uh, with artificial intelligence. For example, do you think our humans are likely to be outsmarted and this is going to be hostilities, disasters, and wars because of our uh, losing control of artificial intelligence? Uh, look at the tragedy of uh, AlphaGo beating May in the chess game. The, 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 I mean, if that's going to be exaggerated uh, and blow out of proportions, it's, it's likely to cause panic. AI is not uh, as uh, scary as imaginative as a lot of people you know, think. Uh, if you look at the uh, deep learning technology you know, we are using today, it's based on a large amount of data. It's actually a big pattern classification and uh, recognition. You know, so that's because of uh, data, because of algorithmic development. Uh, and we are able, a lot, uh, of course, uh, computing power, we're able to, for the first time in history, uh, you know, to do voice recognition and face recognition, picture recognition, as good as uh, in a human being. That is significant. Uh, and also we're able to understand the natural language uh, as good as human being. Maybe there are a few years away from that. Uh, we're able to interact with the machine just like the machine interact, just like people interact with people. So uh, this is one of uh, the major objectives of computer science. Right? You want to and I talk with machine as human being. You want to uh, think uh, as uh, machine, want to think as human being. So those two things actually right now are beginning to uh, make real roads into the real uh, applications. So, so let me put it this way. Uh, uh, if, if you look at what we are building today, it's not going to all smart people. In certain defined, well defined category, you will actually do better jobs than human being, you know, based on the algorithms, the learning capability we design. Right? But it's, it, the intelligence is not the same way as uh, the human intelligence. In fact, you know, artificial intelligence is a real defined word. It should be a machine intelligence. That's a very interesting uh, definition of that. Let me, also, intelligence. let me also say this. Uh, you know, in the next uh, you know, 15, 20 years, there will be you know, certain jobs uh, displaced. You know, there will be companies... We will come back to examine the possible loss of jobs uh, in the job market. Uh, right. uh, the huge success of box office with the Hollywood blockbusters uh, uh, means uh, young people are hopelessly in love with the use of digital technology to create a scenario where robots cannot be beaten. And in the Star Wars, I mean, uh, alien uh, beings are coming from the uh, universe uh, will wipe people out of the, uh, from the surface of the Earth. Now, do you think this is likely to happen? Because that is exactly the nightmarish picture of uh, digital technology. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, people may have different flavors. You know, there, there are people who like uh, in mixed reality and you know, virtual reality using a lot of uh, mm -hmm. animation and, and and the digital arts. There are people like myself, and, you know, I actually like uh, the real human actors with the minimal uh, digital 
uh, you know, technology. You know, it, it. So people have the flavors, and, and you know, I think uh, the important thing is uh, we as a human being are able to create the contents the way we want. Uh, we just have more choices. I personally am not a, I'm actually personally not a fan of a lot of uh, the high tech. You know, I use a cell phone, but I don't use it uh, uh, excessively. Uh, I, I ran, I, Why? Uh, well, you know, I yeah. wanted to because it will uh, drain your energy. Uh, you spend too much time on the keyboard. For example, I just turn off my uh, friend uh, circle. Right? I actually I cut myself from a social network. I see for you know, you set a very good example for me. You're a very good role model. I should have done the same. Right? Okay, let's see if you can do it. <laughs> <I'll> try. <laughs> okay. right. well, we can, we can, you know, uh, put a, put a bet. Maybe if we can do it, uh, you know, two weeks, not not two months. It's hard for you, I know. <laughs> what makes artificial intelligence from a human being, as some experts pointed out wisely, is uh, two things. One is our emotion, the other consciousness. Do you right. think uh, it is in these two areas uh, where we st will still maintain the advantage uh, and dignity of a human being? So for computer science, scientists, in all those years, we're trying to do uh, three things to make machine really more capable. To uh, interact uh, as a human being, to think as human being, and also to feel as human being. Uh, and at first level, uh, machines are quite close. And the highest level, you know, the technology we have today, deep learning, all, all the stuff we're working on, will not land it. There's no possibility to, to land it. Uh, so there's no worry about this. We, we're not working on things uh, that have emotions. You know. Our job right now is to make sure a machine uh, can help people, uh, be a supplement to people to do the things that people don't want to do. Uh, for example, all the repetitive work, whether it's physical or it's uh, uh, intellectual, right? the machine actually can uh, do that because it is repetitive, it is boring, uh, and people probably don't want to do that. So it is really to help people, not to replace people. But what about those jobs that are not repetitive? Right, for jobs that have uh, creative uh, exactly. components uh, or have an emotional connection uh, that need a human interaction, uh, those jobs will be uh, actually will be uh, created, right? will actually you know, be expanded. You need more ty those type of jobs. In 2016, the Information Technology Ministry of China estimated that the country needed an additional 5 million AI workers to meet the industry's needs. Yes. Does China have enough artificial intelligence talents? Uh, what programs are in place to prepare people for this work? Well, if you look at uh, you know, AI, there are uh, really four elements. Uh, uh, talent, technology, you know, capital, and of course uh, the market. Uh, technology and uh, talents are, are really the most critical thing, and of course talents uh, is uh, you know, where all the competitors uh, has been built or not. Uh, you know, right now, there is a, a shortage of uh, AI uh, talent, uh, so that's why the Ministry of Education is actually uh, beginning to instill uh, 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 all the AI curriculum actually you know, in uh, colleges graduate school or even in high school. I think that's a good thing. You know, it's going to take uh, maybe 10 years to build that capability, but uh, you know, China uh, will be, in terms of uh, competitiveness, are going to be a, a huge, uh, uh, have a huge human supply. Yeah, yeah, actually, there's no question that uh, government-wise, uh, a lot of uh, resources will be put into R&D areas. I'm talking about whether brilliant students or scholars can be attracted to come back after their study academic research in industrial nations such as European countries and North America. Look at the visa restrictions imposed by President Trump. He vowed to prevent Chinese students or researchers from getting involved into high-tech research areas. And he even banned high-tech products from being exported to China in this battle for primacy of digital technology. In this case, do you think uh, uh, talented professionals in digital technology will be seriously affected? Uh, well, you know, if you look at in the last few years, uh, the returning of uh, overseas uh, you know, talents, not only AI but also in other uh, professionals, uh, actually you know, are accelerating. Uh, in the last uh, two years, especially, you know, we see a lot of uh, uh, actually you know, not only graduate students but also 
uh, some very senior leaders, uh, technology leaders, coming back to, to China, either to do startups, to uh, be a professor, uh, or to uh, join existing companies. I see this the trend continue, uh, and you know we're going to see a lot of people uh, coming back to China. But also, let me say this: you know, we for China to come become a world leader, we need to attract uh, talents not only of the Chinese origin, but also you know, all the global talents. Uh, so China, you know, we need to improve further the overall you know, climate for talent uh, attraction. But what kind of conditions uh, should be created by the government and companies in mainland China to bring those brilliant Chinese scholars and students back? Well, to make sure they have the opportunity to succeed, to make sure you know, they have uh, uh, the, the freedom uh, to work on you know, great projects, and also they're able to travel back and forth to interact with uh, you know, academia and the industry uh, around the world. Uh, I think, it's, and of course, also to provide uh, uh, the right kind of you know, education and a healthcare uh, system. Uh, for their children and for, for their, their parents. Children for their <laughs> exactly, that's right. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. You are working dialogue with Mr. Zhang Yaqin, uh, President of Baidu. Uh, and we're discussing impact of artificial intelligence on the prospect of the Chinese economy. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Who will be the winners and the losers uh, in this industrial revolution? Well, I think obviously China will be one of uh, the, the winners. You know, there will be uh, multiple winners. But let me also say this. Uh, the companies uh, or the jobs that do repetitive uh, and, and, and the routine things will be heavily impacted. And do you think I will my job? And you will not. Well, in fact, uh, we need more jobs. It's creative. Uh, Thank you so much. I appreciate your uh, response. Chinese people uh, likewise show their concerns about the protection of privacy. In general, do you think this is a big issue? Uh, it is a big issue. And I am concerned about the privacy. So Welcome back, sir. Let's look at uh, this. Artificial intelligence could add $15.7 trillion to the global economy by 2030, according to a report from the consultancy firm PwC. But will the economic growth cost the human costs a massive scale? And what will, be, what will an artificial intelligence-powered economy be like? Uh, well, that is uh, a uh, tremendous uh, scale. Uh, almost uh, the size of uh, China and uh, Indian today, uh, GDP combined. Uh, so obviously that is uh, a tremendous opportunity. Uh, and I, I think uh, uh, for AI to work, uh, again, you know, it takes uh, a lot of uh, talents, you need uh, the right kind of technology, uh, and also with the right market and the, and the investments. Uh, China, you know, for the first time in history, has all those elements in place. Besides, the government has a very uh, preferable you know, policy and the, the right kind of national strategy to make that happen. So I'm confident that China will become uh, one of uh, the world power you know, in the next uh, you know, 10 or 20 years. Uh, I think China and the US will be the twin engine to drive uh, the next wave of economic growth. The emergence and prosperity of artificial intelligence is described as the impact of the fourth industrial revolution. Who will be the winners and the losers uh, in this industrial revolution? Um, well, I think obviously China will be one of uh, the, the winners. You know, there will be uh, multiple winners. But let me also say this. Uh, any you know, companies or industry uh, that have uh, uh, creative elements you know, well uh, benefits from the rise of AI. Uh, you know, the companies uh, or the jobs that do repetitive you know, and, and, and the routine things you know, will be heavily impacted. Uh, so for example, right now, you know, I'm sending my uh, son to university. 
I want to make sure actually he work on things that's really creative. He's not going to do things that just going to be repetitive, right? Whether it's physical or it is uh, intellectual. One of uh, the things about uh, machine learning is a lot of uh, the high level jobs, uh, the white color jobs uh, could be replaced. You know, for example, radiologists, 90% of those could be replaced by machine. Some of uh, the uh, simultaneous translation, uh, uh, that jobs might go away you know, because the uh, machine can do that pretty well for most uh, uh, of the applications. And do you think I will lose my job? Uh, you will not. Well, in fact, uh, we need the more jobs with creative uh, the thinking and, and uh, you know, with uh, more you know, entertaining, more interesting the question from you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate your uh, response because I. I don't want to be viewed as a machine of Q&A. But having, but having, said, <laughs> but having said that, you know, I am uh, you know, I'm very optimistic. You know, in the short term, there will be disruption. You know, there will be jobs lost, the company you know, disappear. Uh, but overall, after we uh, get into uh, the equilibrium, you know, there will be more creative, better jobs, better paying jobs, high quality jobs created. And overall, you know, human being will live in a better world. But in the process, you know, let's make sure uh, people are not left behind, uh, provide the right kind of education training to bring people uh, up that scale to make sure they are productive you know, in this transition. In the age of big data and uh, artificial intelligence, we run high risk of having practically little privacy. That's perhaps why in Western countries and economies, the use of uh, uh, mobile uh, sharing bicycles uh, as well as uh, online payment uh, remains uh, highly underdeveloped. Obviously, uh, Chinese people uh, likewise show their concerns about the protection of privacy. In general, do you think this is a big issue? Uh, it is a big issue, and I am concerned about the privacy. So, you know, for a large tech companies, you know, uh, it is uh, critical you know, for uh, them to protect uh, the data uh, integrity and also, of course, privacy. Uh, and big companies have uh, a bigger share of responsibility. Do you think this is a matter of legislation for the National People's Congress uh, to consider seriously concerns of the consumers? Yeah, it takes uh, a lot of efforts. You need to have uh, the right kind of technology, right kind of a policy. Uh, and, and the regulation, but also you need the, the overall awareness right, to make sure you know, there is uh, enforcement of that. Uh, but it is uh, becoming a big issue, and uh, you know, we uh, put this as the highest priority of our uh, product development and, and decision making. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.